Breaking news tonight, movie star Alec Baldwin one step closer to a jury trial on homicide. Baldwin's rage fits and uncontrollable anger on set coming back to bite him in the neck as his Rust movie co-defendant found guilty for the on-set shooting death of wife and mother cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Next up, Alec Baldwin. Good evening, I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us. We find the defendant, Hannah Gutierrez, guilty of involuntary manslaughter as charged in count one. We find the defendant, Hannah Gutierrez, not guilty of tampering with evidence as charged in count two. Co-defendant, the armorer, just found guilty in a court of law. The armorer charged along with Alec Baldwin. Is he this close to a jury trial on homicide? You're seeing right there uh, Gutierrez, Hannah Gutierrez, the armorer, along with Alec Baldwin on the Rust set. Joining me in all-star panel to make sense of what we know right now, Maureen Callahan, first up, columnist, DailyMail.com. Maureen, thank you for being with us. What happened? Thanks for having me, Nancy. So what happened is you're correct. Alec Baldwin is one step closer. He is next up. And if what happened to this armorer is any indication of what is about to happen to Alec Baldwin, things do not look good for him. I would argue that aside from the complete lack of safety protocols that were left just completely neglected on this set, you know, you have this armor who's arguing, I was young and naive, I was in over my head, then don't take the job where your main responsibility is to keep the cast and crew safe from life and limb being destroyed. What I think is the connective tissue between Hannah Gutierrez Reed and Alec Baldwin is, as the judge said in Hannah's sentencing, an utter lack of remorse, an utter lack of taking any accountability. And as we have seen since this tragic incident, Alec Baldwin from moment one has expressed sympathy for only himself. Along with his wife, who keeps posting shots of herself in skin-tight leggings and stiletto heels walking around New York and very callously posting happy moments of them with their family as the family of Helena Hutchins goes without a wife and mom. Guys, it didn't help anything when the co-defendant, the armorer, an armorer is the person on the set that's in charge of all of the ammo and the guns and the weapons. Hannah Gutierrez Reed actually is caught calling the jurors idiot a-holes. Idiots and a-holes. Okay, that's not going to help anything. Uh, again, with me, an all-star panel, but now I want to go to Dale Carson. And remember, panel, we're not having high tea at Windsor Castle. Just jump in if you have a thought. Dale Carson, high-profile lawyer, former FBI agent, joining us out of Jacksonville, star, uh, ho uh, author of Arrest Proof Yourself. He's at DaleCarsonLaw.com. Dale, have your clients still not figured out their calls are being recorded? You know, when you've got yeah, somebody real... two or three days before sentencing and they're going, the jury's an a-hole, the jury's a bunch of idiots. Really? It's, it's, a, it's a real problem. And no matter how many times you tell your clients that they're recording the phone calls, it really doesn't have uh, a significant effect on their conversations on telephones to their friends because they're talking to people that they purportedly or have positive relationships with. And of course, she's probably right. They did convict her, although they did find her not guilty of the Put cocaine up, charge, please. which Put is kind of a gift. Up. Put him up. Did you just say Gutierrez is kind of right? Is that what you said? She's probably kind of right. I did. Was she no, called no, the absolutely jurors I did. They, From her perspective, they convicted her, right? They're not oh, friends. Is that of hers, her truth? Obviously. 
Is she just telling her truth? In other words, <laughs> of course, history rewritten the way she wants it to be. Well, I, they convicted her, and you got to know that that doesn't make her feel good. So since she's full of herself, she's going to say she that feels. it's their are fault. Are you crazy? What? I just are. Are you okay? Number one, are you in the middle of like maybe? Okay, so you're agreeing with the woman that a jury has found guilty in a homicide charge where a shooting death occurred at the workplace of a young wife slash mother, incredible cinematographer. You're okay with her calling the jurors a-holes and idiots. I'm a defense attorney, Nancy. Of course I'm okay with that. I zealously well, represent my Well, you know what's interesting? Client. A snake crawls on its belly and it thinks it's a king, okay? But it's not. It's a snake. So blurting out, I'm a defense attorney, doesn't make it okay. You know what? I'm going to let you think about what you've done for a few moments. I'm putting you in the corner. You're in t official timeout. <laughs> uh, guys, right. in case any of you have forgotten what this is about, all right, we're joking around. Helena Hutchins is dead. She has a little boy and a husband. The little boy, no mommy. No mommy. That's never going to change for him. There may be a stepmother someday. There may be a daddy's girlfriend. But there is no such thing as a new mother. Take a listen to this 911 call. A Bonanza Creek Ranch has had two people accidentally shot on a movie set by a prop gun. We need help immediately. Okay. Bonanza Creek Ranch, come on. Stay, stay on the phone with me. We're going to get some help, okay? Okay. What is your name? Don't hang up, okay? Hold on just one second. It sounds like somebody else is calling for two ambulances. Else is calling you better make sure. Good. Everybody should be. We need some help. Our director and our cameraman, the camerawoman has been shot. Are they going to take him to the road? So was it loaded with a real bullet or one? We don't, I, don't, I cannot tell you that. Okay. Gosh, they were pretty calm, uh, a very calm demeanor when two people had been shot. Maureen Callahan, special guest joining us, columnist for DailyMail.com, I think is the biggest online news outlet in the world. Not sure about that. I'm sure all the other outlets would argue with that. Maureen Callahan, two people were shot. Who's the other one? I know Helena Hutchins, a cinematographer. And who's the other one? Shot by Alec Baldwin, although he keeps saying he didn't pull the trigger. Okay. I hope he tells that to the jury. Who's the other victim? It was Joel Souza, who was on the set as well, and who testified in this case that he felt that he had been struck by a baseball bat and that the moment the shooting happened, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, the armorer in question, was standing over him and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, which is maybe the first and only time we have heard anything approaching culpability or remorse out of this young woman. I would also say to your earlier point about her being recorded on prison calls, referring to the jurors as idiots, a-holes, and worse, saying that the judge was on the take and, quote, on a power trip, just it goes to the level of intelligence here. You know, one would think if you're on trial for your life, she will never work in this industry again. She will never hold a job of uh, any Could, could real I just say yet. Maureen Callahan, please? Maureen Callahan, you know, that's um, an old phrase that's thrown around. You'll never work in this town again. I actually had that said to me uh, by the head of a network once, by the way. Um, I still did what I was really? going to do anyway. Oh, oh, yeah, but that's a story for another day. Right now I'm on Alec Baldwin. You said that, and hey, like, she's not going to be an armorer again. Who cares? I'd be worried about not going to jail with all the killers and the child molesters and the dope dealers. But that's just me. I wouldn't worry too much about my career as a movie armorer at this moment. But you said her calling the jurors idiots and a-holes, you said and worse, mm -hmm. what was worse than that other than saying the judge is on the take? That, that's huge. Well, I would never use this word, and most polite people don't use this word anymore, but she used the R word in referring to the jurors' lack of intelligence. 
You know, it's all just emblematic of a set, I believe, that from the top down. Okay. And by that, I mean by our Maureen Baldwin. Callahan, I have yeah. huge respect for you, mm -hmm. but... What did she say? She called the jurors retards? Is that what you're saying? She did. She did. She did. You know, it just never ends with this one, does it? Her and Alec Baldwin. You know what? That brings me to another point, why their trials were severed to start with, because I'd put those two in the same pot and let them stew together. But that said, I want to get back. Oh, there you are in all your beauty and splendor. Take a listen to this 911 call. We have two entries from a movie done shot. Okay. We're getting them out there already. Just stay on the phone with me. Okay. okay. I just got <laughs> that yelled at me at lunch because asking about revisions. Is <laughs> Did you see him yell at my chest and yell at me? He's supposed to check the guns. He's responsible for the guns. Are you Mimi? No, no, no. I'm a script supervisor. How, I ran how many sitting, people were injured? Two I, that I know of. I was sitting, we were rehearsing, and it went off, and I ran out. We all ran out. Joining me, in addition to Dale Carson and special guest Maureen Callahan, is a renowned forensic pathologist, medical examiner, a lucky for me, former detective. She literally wrote the book, Homicide Investigation Field Guide, new book, Money, Mischief, and Murder, The Murdoch Saga. You may need a volume two on that one, Dr. Dupree. Dr. Dupree, you hear the 911 caller state that one of the victims is bleeding. She wasn't just bleeding. She bled out. She died. How quickly can a human exsanguinate? Well, Nancy, of course, as you know, it depends on where the person is shot. Um, it can take, you know, a very short period of time or it can take several minutes. It all depends on the organs and the injury itself. Guys, we're showing you exhibits that have come in front of the jury on the first defendant, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, convicted on manslaughter and sentenced to jail time. Is Alec Baldwin next? Now, let me warn everybody, his defense attorneys have already, wait, did they actually video what was happening? Yep, they did. But maybe that's somebody's body cam. That could be body cam video. Okay, it is. That's good to know. Warning to everybody, warning to the prosecutor, the judge, and the future jurors, the defense has threatened to call out the big guns in this case, threatening to bring on Helen Mirren and Harrison Ford as defense witnesses. Uh, I'm pretty sure, Maureen Callahan, that Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren, two icons in the movie industry, were not on the set that day. Would you uh, uh, agree with that? I think that's a safe assumption to make, Nancy. I mean, I'm sure both of them would love to be excluded from this narrative. I mean, again, this just shows you the level of delusion and entitlement and how long someone like Alec Baldwin has been in his bubble. He thinks by hauling in a couple of aging A-listers who had nothing to do with this tragedy that somehow the jury will be impressed that somehow the jury will think that this guy, again, who has shown zero remorse, who, as you said, he and his wife posting happy family photos within days of Helena Hutchinson's wholly preventable death, saying that it was intense parenting through this difficult time when Helena's little boy was unable to speak for two days after this death. You think this guy's remotely sympathetic? You think Helena Hutchins's armorer was like had a remote shot at getting a sympathetic jury like Alec Baldwin. I hope his defense attorneys are able to knock some sense into him because she's going to prison, not jail. The judge said because of her lack of remorse, because of her attempts to blame everybody else. And if you want another, just look at the level of her delusion. This girl tried to get Helena's family members to testify for her in court. What part of the body was injured? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not in there. Okay, uh, that's fine. Is there more than one wound? Uh, I think there's one on, on, on two ind individuals. One wound on two individuals? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm sending the ambulance up <laughs> now. Stanley, I know what you exactly want to do next, okay? Okay. Um, 
I'm going to tell you how to stop the bleeding. Listen carefully. Make sure we do it right. Um, we do. Um, oh, we do have a, a medic on set. A medic on set. They're already doing that. I believe okay. so. Yeah. Is the bleeding controlled? Um, let's see if I'm allowed to get it. Helena Hutchins dies on the set of Alec Baldwin's new movie, Rust. The armorer, that's what they call them, um, uh, uh, joining me, Johannes Chumweno, film and TV safety expert, CEO of Star Network, and you can find him at VIPstarnetwork.com. Johannes, they did everything wrong. The armorer did. And when Alec Baldwin actually says he didn't pull the trigger, that's complete BS, technical legal term, because he did pull the trigger, trigger and ballistics tests were conducted to prove he pulled the trigger. So before I get back on um, Gutierrez <laughs> calling the ju saying the judge is on the take and uh, asking the victim's family to testify for her in court. There's just so much wrong she did in court. That's but right. what went wrong on the set, Mr. Chimueno? Pre-planning, Nancy. This is a case that underscores the significance from a health and safety standpoint. This case in itself will change, will allow a catalyst of change within the industry in terms of pre-planning health and safety protocols, stringent requirements for training, as well as most importantly, the hiring, the workforce development, everything on set should have never even got to a stage where there was potentially live ammunition in a dummy gun, Nancy. And so this, uh, the importance of this will, will have detriments into the future. And it, it will be really interesting to, to follow the case for the next five to 10 years. Okay, you know what? Uh, Johannes Chimueno, film and TV safety expert, just said everything 100% accurately. But when I think about the next 5, 10, 15 years, all I think about is Helena Hutchins' boy growing up and having one Christmas after the next without mom, one birthday after the next without mom, going to her grave, putting flowers there. As you heard Maureen Callahan speak earlier from DailyMail.com, the little boy didn't utter one word for two days after he found out his mother had been shot dead at work by Alec Baldwin. Uh, guys, many people have heard the 911 calls made that day, but very few have heard the police body cam footage where the rust armorer, Hannah Gutierrez, is taken with a cop around the set as she tries desperately to collect rounds and rounds of ammunition. Listen. I need to know where the guns are right now. Oh, this is a gun. That's the gun. Okay. Come with me. Uh, where, is, where, where are they at? Did you hear that? She can't find the ammo. She, they don't know which gun is which. Wow. Okay. Back to Maureen Callahan joining us from DailyMail.com. What about the threats? Of, hey, hey, Jackie, give me um, some soap and a washcloth right now because I'm going straight to Maureen Callahan's set and washing her mouth out with soap to refer to Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren as aging A-listers. Okay, girl, you got a nerve, okay? I'm going to try That's to ignore that for right now to just get the... Yes, but their Why? popularity they're is not my 80s. problem right now because they're icons, they're legends, they're still starring on the screen, they're rolling in money. Harrison Ford has a wife that's like 30 years younger than him. He's flying around in planes and you called him an aging A-lister. You know what? 
I would not want to look up and see Indiana Jones coming after me. I don't care how old he is with that whip. Forget it. That said, their threat is they're going to call in Helen Mirren and Harrison Ford to say what? Okay, I'm leading up to a legal point, Maureen Callahan. Once you bring in character evidence in a trial, such as Harrison Ford, if he would do it, say, yeah, he, uh, Baldwin's a great guy. That's called opening the door under the law. And I would wait on the edge of my seat every trial, hoping the defendant would bring in his or her good character. Why? Under our Constitution, the state's not allowed to say, yeah, he's got a, a, an arrest for this. He attacked a lady in a parking lot. He attacked this person. He blessed out that. You can't do that. You cannot try a defendant on their reputation unless and until they open the door. Then the state takes out this very, very huge file like this one and starts going through all of the convictions and the prior bad acts. So I pray that they bring on Ford and Mirren because once they do, all of the bloviators BS over the years is coming right into the courtroom like the Easter parade. Okay, so this is what such a great point. Does Al what history such does a great Alec point. Baldwin? This is the obvious, right? Have the the public rage yeah. monster we have long known and been too terribly acquainted with. Okay, Alec Baldwin, who has punched numerous members of the paparazzi, who fairly recently got into like slugging somebody over street parking in New York City, who called like a star a Starbucks barista like a a queen who, you know, left that unforgettable voicemail message for his then, like, 12-year-old daughter, calling her a thoughtless little pig, things thrown around on Broadway, backstage. Like, the so the top part of this um, indictment for Baldwin states that he had, quote, no emotional control, no control of his emotions on this set, to which the members of the general public, I guarantee you, any jury pool would say, no surprise there. This guy is full of rage. And again, I think it was a top down kind of thing. This was his set. He was a producer. He was the star. He allowed an, like a completely inexperienced, gutless, naive, lazy, indolent kid to be in charge of ammunition on a set that the day or two before, no, the morning of, Helena Hutchins' fatal shooting, a good number of that crew walked off the set because they had been sounding the alarm for days with the production. In recorded jailhouse phone calls, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed lashes out at the jury after she is convicted on manslaughter charges, but before she is sentenced. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed blasts the jurors that convicted her, calling them idiots and a-holes. These jailhouse phone call recordings are brought out by the prosecution just in time for sentencing. The defense has worked hard to present Gutierrez Reed in a softer, more genteel manner, but prosecutors say the jailhouse recordings show how she really is outside of court. Gutierrez Reed wants Alec Baldwin to go to jail too and says she won't testify at his upcoming trial if subpoenaed. Wow. Okay, so how are you going to get out of that when you're subpoenaed? And what do you just stick your bottom lip out uh, so far? You could plant a row of turnips on it and refuse to testify. Okay, that's not going to work. But that said, it, did she do that, Maureen Callahan, DailyMail.com? Did she threaten not to testify if called? That's what I've read. That she's, But she also complained that Alec Baldwin had not been subpoenaed in her case. So, again, you're dealing with a level of not just emotional and psychological immaturity, but intellectual deficit. And the idea that this young woman was placed in charge of ammunition and weaponry on this set just beggars belief. She got what was coming to her. She probably would have gotten a lesser sentence again had she displayed one iota of genuine remorse. But the only tears she shed we're at the end of this trial for herself. And this is why I believe this trial is a giant foreshadowing of what we are about to see with Alec Baldwin standing trial on a much larger scale before a much larger audience in July. Well, 
this woman, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, would certainly not be the first for jailhouse conversations coming back to bite you in the neck. We just saw the sentencing and the parents of Ethan Crumley, the school shooter. And then we find out behind bars, Crumley's dad threatened to take a hit out on the lady prosecutor. Listen. Rarely do we see a defendant threatening the prosecutor, let alone a member of a trial team, let alone the elected official. There will be retribution. She's going to be sucking on a hot rock down in hell soon. I'm on a ramp. I'm on. I'm on a rampage, Karen. Yes, Karen McDonald. Your is going down, and you better. Here. I didn't want to read that, Judge. That was just a few weeks before the trial. I don't know any other definition what that could be other than a specific threat made to a member of the trial team. Okay, so that's what uh, jailhouse banter, let me say, gets you at sentencing. And here, Hannah Gutierrez Reed calling the jurors a-holes and idiots and saying the judge is on the take. Ouch. Joining me right now, uh, another special guest in addition to Maureen Callahan, Johannes Chamueno, Dr. Dupree, and Dale Carson. Paul Zyke is joining us, former police commander, uh, also with the Screen Actors Guild, experience using firearms with blanks during live action movie scenes, such as Terminator. Uh, author of Stop Him From Killing Them on Amazon. That's a lot. But before I continue with your CV, let me ask you what went wrong on the set. And Alec Baldwin is now uh, up against it because he openly stated he did not pull the trigger. Now, when that is disproved at trial, which it will be, he's going to be stuck with his lie. Explain to me how it was proven with the gun in question, the homicide gun, that somebody had to pull the trigger. Well, the FBI did a series of testing on that weapon, and it was determined that there is no way for that weapon to fire unless the, the trigger is actually pulled. It's just that simple. And there's no way for a projectile to strike somebody that you're not aiming a weapon at them. In both cases, that, that, that occurred. The environment has to be There can be no live ammunition anywhere to be seen. That was also breached. There was a, a cataclysmic failure at multiple points that synergistically created this perfect storm and unfortunately resulted in absolute horrific incident that we we just can't go back and fix however moving forward we should stop utilizing deadly weapons as prop guns this was not a prop gun it's a functioning firearm being used as a prop and at the end of the day that is a contributory factor in what caused this i'm sentencing you to 18 months of incarceration at a new mexico women's correctional facility I find that what you did constitutes a zero, serious violent offense. It was committed in a physically violent manner, a fatal gunshot done with your recklessness in the face of knowledge that your acts were reasonably likely to result in serious harm. You were the armorer, the one that stood between a safe weapon and a weapon that could kill someone. You alone turned a safe weapon into a lethal weapon. But for you, Ms. Hutchins would be alive a husband would have his partner, and a little boy would have his mother. Wow. Did you see Gutierrez read during the sentencing? She showed no emotion whatsoever. And is it true, Maureen Callahan, you said earlier, Maureen joining us from DailyMail.com, she actually asked Helena Hutchins' family to come on and testify for her? Yes. Yes which again goes to the level of entitlement of complete lack of culpability accountability that she took she said to the judge before her sentencing you know this doesn't make me a monster i made a mistake it just makes me a human being you know and it sort of springs from this ethos of like gen zers that any mistake even one that results in the end of a life 
It's just something that kind of goes into the bank of your own lived experiences that will hopefully make you better going forward. I mean, this is everything that like resulted in her getting 18 months in prison, not jail. And one would hope she would emerge from this a little bit humbled, a little bit better. I doubt it. And joining me, high profile lawyer, former Fed with the FBI, Dale Carson. Dale, this should be a blueprint for Alec Baldwin, but I'm pretty sure, you know, when you don't know a horse, look at his track record. He's never listened to a darn thing anybody's ever told him. Uh, so I, I doubt he's going to listen now. But the trial of Hannah Gutierrez Reed, the armorer on the Rust set, should be a blueprint a forewarning to him because what she did was this blaming each other. That's why I like tri co defendants together because the jury gets to sit there and watch them all at the same table blaming each other. She blamed Baldwin. When Baldwin goes to trial, he's going to blame her. It didn't work for Gutierrez Reed. Do you think it'll work for Baldwin? Well, of course, that's why you call A-listers who've been involved in firearms and the use of armors to argue that you have a right to rely on what they've done. But I will say this, the person responsible for the death here and the use of a firearm is Baldwin. This armor, of course, facilitated that, but the real guilt has to be put on the person who actually killed the individual. Firearms are inherently dangerous. I've been in a number of shootings. I've seen the results of this. Firearms are dangerous. And your other guest is absolutely correct. To have a functioning firearm on set with actual live rounds is outrageous. No one in their right mind would do that. Even the FBI, when it uses prop guns, they're drilled so that they can't fire a projectile, even if what someone mistakenly puts something in a chamber. And to not do that is insane, but it speaks to the use of firearms in movies and on scenes directly. And it tells us that guns are safe. I can tell you, I've carried a gun since I was 22 in a police situation all my life. They're dangerous. I don't like them. I hide them. I put them in a safe when I'm not using them. All of that. And this just does Second not, verse, uh, same as the first. If I had you on trial, I would object for being unresponsive to the question. The question was not about you as a young rookie cop at age 22 carrying a weapon. The question was about the theory of defense at trial. Will Alec Baldwin blame the armorer like the armorer blamed Alec Baldwin, because it didn't of work course. very well of, for of her. Of course he will. Of course and he will. will. And work? that's why he will called it work? the A-listers. Because I say it won't work. Oh, I say it, it won't, won't work because work. he's responsible for the firearm pointed at a person who killed. Lord, man, I'm a JD, not a DDS. I don't know how to pull a tooth, but I will try. Let me go to Johannes Chamueno joining us, film and TV safety expert at VIPstarnetwork.com. Johannes, right or wrong, Baldwin has claimed, and this is going to come back to haunt him, that he didn't pull the trigger. He pulled wrong. the trigger. Wrong, Nancy. Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. It's all wrong. wrong. And I think I think the idea is, is that going into the case, Ms. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed is now the scapegoat. Would you agree, Nancy? They've already convicted her. And to now convict uh, Alec Baldwin on the same crime, <laughs> the same case, is going to be challenged. And so, r rather right or wrong, the idea is that the judge has already ruled in Hannah Gutierrez-Reed's case. She is now the scapegoat. Health and safety standards will continue to be improved alongside the catastrophic traffic, uh, tragic incident rather, uh, that has occurred between the family of Helena Hutchinson. Really from a comprehensive health and safety standpoint, we can now look at this case and say, how do we improve? How do we move forward in a way that's consistent with the situation that, again, that the family Helena Hutchinson is facing. And so um, I'm unfortunately um, uh, gonna, gonna agree that uh, Hannah Gutierrez is now the scapegoat in the case. Put him up, please, Liz. So uh, with me, Johannes Chimueno, who's a film and TV safety expert. I'm trying to 
that was the mouthful, number one. Um, I put this down because I could not keep up with everything you were saying, but to put it in a nutshell, I think what you said is they are, Baldwin's team is going to blame Gutierrez Reed and it may very well work because she's already been convicted and they can say, look, she's been convicted. A jury said so. She's the That's problem, right. not our client. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. I think I hear somebody jumping in. Was it Maureen or Dr. Dupree? It's Dr. Dupree, Nancy. Um, I think that, uh, you know, this is absolutely tragic and absolutely Alex Baldwin bears some responsibility. But I also think that we have to put the majority of the, the blame or responsibility on Hannah. It was her job. Ah. What would we expect? What would we expect Alex to do? You know, obviously anyone handling a gun needs to make sure that it is safe. But if you open that cylinder and you look at the cartridges in there, I don't think you can tell the difference from a live round and a blank round unless you take the bullets out of the chamber. And is, is that what we expect him to do? Maybe it is. I don't know the answer to that. But the problem is the head stamp may be different, which is the stamp on the back of the bullet or the base of the bullet where the firing pin strikes it. That may be different from a live round and an, um, a blank round. I don't know. But would Alex know that? I don't know that either. But the only way to really tell whether that was a live round or a blank round is to take the bullets out of the gun and look at the nose of the bullet and see if that is or not. But he was the one that handled it. He is the one that fired the shot. He absolutely bears some responsibility also. And I think that he may be bringing in uh, the other actresses and actors um, to state how it is normally handled. Does an actor, every time they're handled a fire gun, do they always look, take the bullets out and look at the bullets? Do they do that? Or do they assume, right or wrong, do they assume that the one handed to them that said it's safe is safe? Ever since the shooting death of Helena Hutchins on the set of Rust, Alec Baldwin has claimed he did not pull the trigger, even after an FBI report contradicting Baldwin's account of the shooting, saying the trigger had to have been pulled for the gun to fire, Baldwin says he didn't pull the trigger. The FBI report says their testing proves the gun could not be made to fire without the pull of the trigger. Accidental discharge testing determined that the firearm used in the shooting, a 45 Colt single-action revolver, could not have fired without the trigger being pulled. The FBI report also says, with the hammer in the quarter, half cock and fully cocked positions, the gun could not be made to fire without a pull of the trigger. Alec Baldwin says he didn't pull the trigger. So that may very well be the torpedo into Alec Baldwin's defense. Uh, he could rightfully claim, oh, it's all the armorer's fault. That would be a good defense. Do I believe it? No, but he could claim that. But he stuck with his claim. He never pulled the trigger. And uh, there is nothing worse than a big fat lie landing right in the middle of your pristine defense of blaming Gutierrez Reed. So to you, Maureen Callahan, DailyMail.com, he's still stuck with that statement even though the FBI has proven he did pull the trigger. So when you catch the defendant lying, it's hard to believe the rest of their defense. Like, it's her fault, not my fault. Right, Nancy. And to jump off your previous guest's comments, you know, first of all, it is equally Alec Baldwin's fault. He is as culpable as the armorer. Both can be at fault. It's not a binary choice. It's not one or the other. In the days and weeks after this tragedy, I spoke to two veteran experts of firearm safety on Hollywood sets, TV and film. They told me very simple things. There should be no live rounds. There should have been no dummy rounds in that gun. When you bring a gun to set that the armor, her or himself has checked, they then open that weapon in front of the actor and in front of everybody on that set to show that it is empty. They hand it to the actor. The actor examines it themselves. If Alec Baldwin in that scene had been called to put that gun to the temple of his forehead and pull the trigger, do we think he would have opened that gun? I think yes. And finally, you are always instructed to never aim a gun at anything or anyone you do not intend to kill. Alec Baldwin pointed that gun at Helena Hutchins and pulled the trigger. Guns do not go off by themselves. If this defense were allowed to stand, anybody ever charged with shooting or killing somebody with a firearm would point to that defense. Whoops, 
Gun went off by itself. Doesn't happen. Very quickly, we're running out of time, and I got to ask Dale Carson. Dale, I know this is against every fiber of your being as a trial lawyer, but answer succinctly, okay? The state's got another problem of their own doing. I haven't heard anybody mention this yet, but remember, against my recommendation and many others, not just me, the state actually dropped charges against Baldwin early on. They're now claiming... We learned a tough lesson. Yeah. Uh, so now the defense can rightfully argue to the jury, hey, they dropped the charges because they didn't believe in the charges. Now they're bringing them again. That doesn't Well, actually, they stuff. can actually bring witnesses who made that decision, which puts the government in an even less tenable situation, which is certainly what I would do. You'd want the rationale by not prosecuting. Johannes Chamwena, what were you saying? I, I was saying many things in terms of, again, Hannah Gutierrez Reed has already been convicted of involuntary manslaughter. She will be the scapegoat, Nancy. So can we depend on the defense counsel for Alec Baldwin coming in and using that as a, uh, a means to get Alec Baldwin off the case? Absolutely, 100%. And that's what I anticipate will happen going into the case in July. Agree. Paul Zeick, this is your jurisdiction. You are joining us from New Mexico. There, what's the word? Well, the, oh, issue, the, real, pro the real problem that Alec Baldwin has is the elements of this crime, regardless of his status in Hollywood or, you know, how many actors he calls in for his defense, the burden of proof for this particular statute is very low. And the fact that the gun was in his hand, statutorily, uh, he's got a real problem. And and as such, he should take a plea, a plea deal is, is my my where I'm at on this. Because I think he's he's gonna have a real tough time convincing uh, a, a jury that in fact he did not create a sequence of events that created this death. Uh, he was in the mix. There's no way to pull yourself out of this. Perfectly said, Paul Zeich, agree. Guys, let's stop with all the Alec Baldwin for just one moment. And remember, American hero, Border Patrol agent Christopher Luna. Luna died with two New York National Guard members protecting our country. He leaves behind his wife, Esmeralda, and two beautiful children, Sarah and Hayden. Agent Christopher Luna, American hero hero. Big thank you to our guests tonight for being with us, but especially to you for joining us tonight and every night. Nancy Gray signing off. I'll see you tomorrow night, 6 and 9 o'clock sharp Eastern. And until then, good night, friend. Guys, thank you for watching Crime Online with Nancy Grace here on YouTube. To get the very latest, subscribe to Crime Online here.